for those of you who are joining us uh, for the first time or are new to the Tech Council, the San Francisco Tech Council is a multi-sector initiative. Um, we build government, business, nonprofit, and consumer collaboration to advance digital inclusion for seniors and adults with disabilities in San Francisco so all can participate in the city's connected community. So that brings us to today's agenda, uh, the focus on racial equity. And this is the first in a series of meetings that we'll be hosting to apply an equity driven framework to advance digital inclusion in San Francisco, especially focusing on communities of color and widening disparities uh, in light of the COVID pandemic. So for today's presentation, our agenda will have a, a start with a presentation from Aditi Valore, who is with the Policy and Planning Unit at the San Francisco Human Services Agency. Aditi was uh, the point person for the strategic planning process that led to a series of recommendations for the HSA leadership for advancing racial equity at the agency. And that work has resulted in the development of a framework and resources to guide the development of action plans, as well as to assess the equity implications of policies, program design, budgets, etc. And so this work has set the foundation for related work now taking place more broadly across the city and government agencies. Okay, mm -hmm. so Didi, we'll hand over to you and uh, thank you. Wonderful. Um, thank you so much for that introduction, Andrew. I want to preface by saying that I work with the policy and planning unit at the San Francisco Human Services Agency. Um, we do uh, data and analytical work as well as some um, program development and policy work with um, the various departments within our agency. And so I primarily support programs with the Department of Disability and Aging Services, along with Rose Johns, who some of you may know. Um, I've also, as Andrew mentioned, supported some of our agency's nascent work in bringing a racial equity lens and framework to uh, our agency. A lot of that work has been focused pretty internally with respect to our staff um, at the moment. But I think that the advantage of a framework like this is that it can be applied in a number of circumstances. And we certainly collect data and do analysis about our client facing programs. Um, and so that's what I'm gonna talk about a little bit here. Um, I will just caveat that I'm not very familiar with the space of digital inclusion more broadly, but again, can talk a little bit about how we use and think about racial equity in the DOS context and specifically maybe bring some points up about SF Connected. Um, and then you can use that as a, as a launching point for some of your conversation. All right, um, so I just wanted to make sure that we're all on the same page in terms of what we're talking about when we talk about racial equity. So forgive me if this is old hat to many of you, um, but broadly speaking, when we talk about advancing racial equity, we want to eliminate race-based outcome gaps. So we're talking about life outcomes, whether it's in the area of health, education, criminal justice outcomes, uh, income and wealth, um, those kinds of things. And so really anything that you might uh, talk about in terms of shaping someone's life, these are the kinds of outcomes that we tend to look at uh, in the context of racial equity. And right now, circumstances being what they are, we find that race is often predictive of what someone's outcomes will be. And so when we're doing our work to advance racial equity, we want to eliminate those outcome gaps such that race is not a predictive factor in someone's success. Um, and in terms of kind of visioning for racial equity, because that can feel like a, a pretty clinical uh, and abstract way of thinking about the outcomes that we want to achieve, but really it's about ownership and involvement in decision-making um, across uh, groups of, of all kinds, um, especially those who've been historically marginalized. Um, and are marginalized at present, um, that we really meaningfully acknowledge and account for past and current inequities and make sure that the people who have been most impacted by racial inequity are provided with the infrastructure that they need to thrive and really have a role in shaping what that infrastructure looks like and being able to define their own needs and their own solutions to these problems. Um, and also I think an important thing to take away when we talk about racial equity frameworks is that 
everyone benefits from this system. It's not just that we're closing gaps and eliminating racial inequities, but that by bringing uh, the, the full scope of our community into um, the way that we shape our outcomes, everyone stands to gain from that process and we all are able to live in a more just and equitable system. And so folks may have seen some of these graphics um, about making a distinction between equality where we use kind of a one size fits all approach towards an equity and sometimes even a justice framing where we are providing to people what they need in order to achieve similar outcomes. Um, and really, I think pushing for equity and justice to be aligned, it's about addressing structural barriers that we as a society, as institutions have put in place um, that these didn't just emerge naturally um, and that we need to acknowledge and account for the role that we've played in cultivating some of the inequities and making sure that we eliminate them. Um, so it's in the context of this framework um, that DOS has taken on um, a commitment to advancing equity. And so the way that we bring this focus to disability and aging services is one being explicit. Um, equity is one of the named values that guide the department's mission, mission and vision. Um, and we see it borne out in the way that we approach our services. And so we conduct client level demographic data collection because we need to have disaggregated data by race in order to understand who's consuming our services, um, what are the needs that uh, residents of San Francisco who are older or disabled or caregivers or veterans, um, the kinds of needs that they express and ultimately the sort of outcomes that they express that if we're seeing variation by race or ethnicity, is there a reason for that? Um, are there unintended consequences of the way that we're delivering or seeding our services? And are there ways that we can stand to improve our services so that we eliminate uh, racial inequities? Um, and so in addition to doing this important data collection, we also make sure to integrate equity considerations and analysis to inform our decision-making, particularly on resource allocation in terms of program development. Um, and so I just wanted to share with you a couple of examples of what that actually looks like in practice. Um, in 2018, we completed the Dignity Fund Community Needs Assessment. Again, many of you may already be familiar with this document, and that's great. I think you can um, refer to it, and I have some links later in my presentation um, for you to refer to. But a core component of that needs assessment was an equity analysis, um, whose research questions really drove our focus here in this area. Um, and so we were asking questions like, do populations of interest access services at the same rate as their peers citywide? And are we able to understand why or how there may be variation? Um, do service, participations rate, uh, service participation rates vary across the city, across city districts? And then thinking a little bit about funding. And so we identified five different equity factors. Right now we're talking a lot about racial equity focused on communities of color. Um, although there are other dimensions of vulnerability, need and inequity that we also want to focus on for uh, a broader scope in the DOS, in the DOS world. Um, so that includes sexual orientation and gender identity, limited or no English speaking proficiency, poverty and social isolation. Um, so what I'm showing you now are just some of the, the findings that we developed in expanding on the Dignity Fund Community Needs Assessment, Communities of Color Analysis. And so we did a little bit of a deep dive um, to understand service participation here on the left by service um, among the senior population and among the population of adults with disabilities. And so you can see here, um, the service participation rate for SF Connected uh, were, was 12 per 1,000 seniors and eight per 1,000 eligible adults with disabilities. And so when we compare citywide participation overall, this rate um, and break down by client race and ethnicity, we can understand our Asian Pacific Islander clients participating at similar rates as seniors citywide or not. And from that comparison developed a ratio essentially to say, API uh, clients are engaging in services citywide at 
one and 1.3 times the rate of seniors overall. We see some degree of lower rates of participation among Latinx uh, consumers, and this is the senior population. Um, and so ultimately we were able to see that across senior populations and populations of adults with disabilities, communities of color are generally speaking engaging in DOS services at a higher rate than seniors uh, citywide. There is some notable exception. And so we also developed some findings and are still working through um, our understanding of the way that Latinx consumers engage with our services, particularly among the uh, population of adults with disabilities because they tend to buck this trend and participate at lower rates. Um, and so again, I'm not trying to walk you through every single finding that we had in the report, but just show you how we're thinking about using the data that we have from our, our services to understand service participation. So this is an example looking at service participation rates among black seniors in DOS programs. And so if they fall within these red lines, that means that service participation is more or less the same rate as senior citywide. But the farther to the right we go, that means that they're participating at higher and higher rates, you know, two times as, as likely to participate or less. And then we can kind of focus our um, approaches to specific services and understand how or why African-Americans are participating nearly two and a half times less in the village model relative to seniors citywide. We also examined service participation across city districts, um, comparing all seniors in blue uh, to individual racial ethnic groups from communities of color, um, in this case, African-Americans or blacks in red. Um, so again, I'm not gonna walk you through this in a lot of detail, you can refer to the reports, but just in terms of how we're thinking about these issues, we understand that there are also matters of geography that are layered on top of the way that we distribute uh, services, some of which are site-based and some of which are kind of citywide. So I did want to share and pull out for you though, um, some of the trends that we were seeing in SF Connected specifically, because that might be of interest to this group. So this is based on um, the report that we put out in 2018 using um, data from the Office of Community Partnerships from 2016-17. Um, and this, tells us about service participation rates for seniors in the blue uh, table and participation for adults with disabilities by race ethnicity in the purple table. And so generally speaking, we're seeing lower rates of participation across the board in SF Connected programs um, for adults with disabilities, um, particularly uh, Latinx and uh, Asian Pacific Islander groups. 1.1 times less participation among African Americans, you know, they're about at the rate that um, adults with disabilities citywide are engaging with um, SF Connected services. We can see more variation among senior population. So African Americans tend to participate at slightly higher rates than seniors citywide, about 1.2 times as uh, frequently. Um, API and Latinx clients a little bit lower, a little bit lower rates. Um, again, compared, if we sort of look at communities of color collectively and their level of engagement with services compared to uh, the citywide rates or um, particularly white clients, we're seeing that they take up services more commonly. Um, that might be because we're seeing greater levels of need among those populations and specifically because we've targeted services in that way. So what I would do is really refer you to some of the work that we've done in this area, um, particularly to the extent that you're thinking about how we can work with us at Connected and other programs to expand digital inclusion. Um, so some of the reports that I've referenced earlier in my presentation are the Dignity Fund Community Needs Assessment and the expansion of the ex equity analysis, disaggregating communities of color by individual racial and ethnic groups. Um, I also think another great resource is the Dignity Fund Data and Evaluation Report, which is an annual report that we put out. While it doesn't 
formally do an equity analysis and compare rates of service participation, what it does offer is a client profile. Um, so we can see program by program, and so this is just an excerpt, a profile of who is engaging in SF Connected services distributed across the city by race and ethnicity, primary, primary language, SOGI data, and age, um, as well as the service and outcome objectives that have been set for the program. Um, and so uh, these are links that you can click on and I can share the, the presentation after we're done. Um, there are also a number of other uh, reports and publications on our website that may be of use to you. Um, and finally, I just wanted to point you to a couple of uh, additional city resources that you may already be aware of. Um, of course, the Office of Digital Equity is really, um, I think, in your wheelhouse. Um, and so they have produced a digital equity strategic plan and they have data that is disaggregated by race that is specific to questions of broadband access and other measures of digital inclusion. The other newer resource is the Office of Racial Equity which was established last year by the Board of Supervisors through some recent le legislation that they passed. And this is a new office uh, housed within the Human Rights Commission that's helping city departments kind of oversee and advance their racial equity work. And they've put out uh, the citywide racial equity framework, phase one, there will be a phase two forthcoming. Um, and this again, phase one is mostly focused on city staffing and ensuring that our departments internally are uh, using employment practices that advance racial equity and uh, ensure our ability to meet the needs of our consumers and San Francisco residents. Um, phase two, I believe, will focus uh, on um, public facing services and direct services. Um, but the Office of Racial Equity can share more with you on that. Um, so that's what I've got for you all. And I think we have a couple minutes for questions.